Hey guys, welcome back. It's Missy. If you like getting to the root of your issues and learning how to heal and deal, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I'd love for you to be a part of the fam. If you're interested in joining our Patreon where we have a group Discord, go ahead and check the link below. It's definitely a good time and you don't want to miss out. So today I thought we would talk about manipulation. Manipulation in itself can be so sneaky and hidden as it is a tool to try to control how a person thinks, feels, and acts through hidden tactics. When we are not educated, we can easily become a victim to a manipulator's manipulation. Manipulators, especially narcissists, have self-preservation and know how to elicit other people's emotions to fulfill their own agenda. They may be aware or not aware of their manipulation, but they have the effect of getting others to act a certain way. You don't have to be a narcissist to manipulate, even though all narcissists do manipulate, but you don't have to be a, nar uh, a narcissist to manipulate. People manipulate because they learned in childhood that's how to get their needs met, which I talk more about in my manipulation video, which I'll leave at the top. So manipulators want to feel in control and be the ones on top and to have the final say. It can cause the victim to feel powerless, low, and confused as there are no obvious signs this is happening. It is completely masked and that's why it's so important to educate ourselves and to be able to identify manipulation. The more aware we become, the less likely we will become a victim to a person's manipulation. In today's society, we thankfully more openly talk about the types of manipulation, like gaslighting, where they try to distort your understanding of reality and make you feel crazy, guilting and shaming, invalidating, love bombing, projection, where they suppress who they are and it comes out with accusing you of being or doing those things they actually are doing. If any of those are unfamiliar, then I highly recommend you go see my previous videos of manipulation and gaslighting as those are the ones that are more often talked about. Today I wanted to address some of the more sneaky ones that are not so talked about and hopefully you feel more empowered knowing some of these not so commonly talked about tactics. So the first one we're going to talk about is they dehumanize you. They do this so you're not seen as an equal and they see you as below them. They feel a loss of power if they see you as equal so it's easier to target someone that is seen as less than them. So they do this by name calling, derating you, making you sure, making sure you feel that your opinions and feelings don't matter, or that you are dumb, or that you feel dumb rather. They want to make you feel that your feelings and perceptions are not legitimate or worthy, so they have to make you out to be the certain character in their head, and they have to try to enforce you to believe you are this person too. If you ever feel someone's demeaning your character and making you feel like you're someone you're not, that is a common tactic of manipulation. They want to make you feel inadequate and inferior to them to maintain power and not make you feel that you are your own intelligent person with feelings that matter. They will completely assassinate your character to the point where they take away your legitimacy as a regular person and you question who you are and why you are seen as this person. And that's when it hits gaslighting territory, where you are not questioning your reality and you feel crazy. I have a whole video on gaslighting, which I also will leave at the top. And, you know, gaslighting is huge manipulation, as when one can't pinpoint reality, then it's easy to trust the person who is making them question their sanity to tell them that they're what the reality is, as it seems like they see things more clearly. The next one's emotional outbursts. Narcissists generally target people that are empathetic caretakers that try to fix. And usually if you are this type of person, when someone is having a negative emotion like anger or sadness or whatever, you get an urge to help them and take care of them. Narcissists use this to their advantage and will have big emotions to get people to succumb to their needs. They will do things like blame you for everything bad and wrong. Instead of owning up to things or having an open dialogue, it is always immediately your fault. They will yell at you for things that are not even your fault, even if you try to prove it to them and have concrete facts. That can cause them to have more of an emotional outburst and start to accuse you of being abusive or crazy for keeping track or outright saying you're making it up. They throw a tantrum when they don't get their way, like where you set a boundary or say no or don't fall victim to their games. They need someone to take blame and they have these emotional outbursts, one because they're stuck at the age they were abused at, 
Two, their ego tries to protect them from the deep, deep shame they have. And three, they saw in their childhood outbursts got them what they wanted. So they carry this into their adulthood where they target specific people that gave into their emotions and would cater to the outbursts. And that is how the Karen was born. Emotional outbursts generally make people feel uncomfortable, especially if you grow up in a home where you had to constantly cater to your highly emotional parent and so narcissists will see that because narcissists manipulators they see what tactic works and they use them again and again and they see oh when i behave a certain way or i have this emotional reaction i can get people to do what i want and so they will continue to do that again and again that's why it's so important that you learn how to cope with your own emotions so other people can't control you with their emotions. Because when you're comfortable with your uncomfortable emotions, you're okay with letting other people be uncomfortable, have their uncomfortable emotions, not feeling like you need to immediately fix or help or take care of it. That's their responsibility. The next is word salad. Word salad is when a narcissist throws random situations or thoughts into a conversation to create confusion. It's a technique used for exerting influence over another person's views, ideas, emotional responses or access to information they will do this by stonewalling blame shifting playing the victim projection or changing the subject they also will not address anything and put their target on the defense the main goal is to create confusion so you not only question your sanity but you don't speak about what they don't want you to address so an example of this would be if you brought up an issue you have with them like for instance they didn't pick you up from work they may turn it into a convo about how you are never there for them and you're too hard on them and then they will bring up about how other people agree with them and they will bring up things from the past. You then don't get any of your concerns or feelings addressed. By the end of it, you may not even truly remember what it is that you brought up in the first place because your head is spinning from all the random events and accusa accusations they brought up. They completely took off the focus of the original topic, so they did not have to face any reality or accountability. You now not only feel unheard, but feel criticized and low. They took the focus off themselves and the original topic and shifted it back to you. And on top of that, they will also argue about non-essential details. You'll feel like a lot's being said, but nothing is being said at the exact same time. It just feels like a bunch of word vomit and confusion and just you're going around in circles. They then manipulate the conversation so they don't have to talk about what they don't want to talk about. And they also make you feel bad rather than them feeling any shame or feeling bad. The next is broad generalizations. Now broad generalizations are statements that are spoken about as if it happens all the time when in reality it's only true some of the time. So narcissists will take flaws you have or mistakes you made and make it seem like it's that it's that that is you all the time and that's the majority of who you are. So they may hyper focus on the fact that you had struggled with depression in the past and tell you that you're always a depressive negative person. But in reality you had your moment and you got through depression, but it isn't like that anymore. Or they mention how clumsy you are when really you tripped one time in the last month. But they hyper focused on this specific time that you were clumsy and you happened to fall. And now they use it as ammo as saying, oh, you're like that all the time. Or they constantly hyper focus on thinking you do everything wrong. Making broad generalizations can help them get a leg up and not only make themselves feel better, but make sure you always feel like you're beneath them. So basically they always are focusing on your downfalls. They don't see you as a person that has good things, but and also negative things, and they don't want you to see that either. They just want you to see yourself as having negative things. They only want you to see how they see you in their cycle of love bombing and devaluing you. And the last one is triangulation. This is when a manipulative person brings a third person into their relationship, or even a convo or fight to remain in control and to set a certain narrative. The manipulator is the master puppeteer and just uses the ones around them as puppets in their game. They do this especially in their family dynamics, like with their kids, so no one can find out their tactics and gang up against them. Generally, the manipulator is the one who is the main communicator and there is either limited contact between the triangulated individuals 
or no contact at all. And they all are told different things about each other to maintain a negative feeling towards the other. Usually one will be the manipulator's flying monkey, where they believe everything the narc says, and the other will be the scapegoat of the narcissist or the manipulator. So an example is, let's say a narcissist goes up to your dad and tells him how mean you've been and makes up stories and lies about you. Now your dad will think all these things and start fighting you about it. The narcissist will sit back and watch their dirty work be done for them while keeping their hands clean. Now they can maintain power and control as you are both fighting and thinking negatively about one another and take the heat off themselves. So they can maintain the power of having people see you in a negative light and then you feel negative towards the person who sees you in that negative light and you no longer have any real close relationships. So now you are seen in that bad light the narcissist was trying to get everyone to see you as. This especially is rough when it comes to reactive abuse because then the narcissist will say something negatively about you to other people and then you will react badly because you've heard the narcissist say this to you time and time again and then it's like quote quote proven that you are this person that the narcissist was saying the whole time because you are just reacting to the abuse you've been enduring. So these are a couple of the not so talked about ways narcissists manipulate. What do you guys think? Leave it all in the comments below. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share with someone that you think may need it. Until next time, thanks for watching. Bye guys. I have my child in my arms right now. I'm really wondering if you can hear the hiccups. There it is. It's a technique used for exerting influence over another person. Oh, I'm not going to be able to do this. Oh. <laughs> I love you so much. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I gotta do a little break. You want mommy all to yourself? You hate mommy working? It's like, goodbye working. It's only time for babies.